everybody, welcome to another winter 2014 SWAT review. My name is Kate, otherwise known as Narutaki. And I'm Alan, otherwise known as Hisui. We are from ReverseThieves.com. You can go there to get other SWAT reviews for the season, as well as our monthly Speakeasy podcast. And this time we are looking at Nobunaga the Fool from Studio Satellite, and it is streaming on Crunchyroll. Now mention, just mention here what we discovered that it's based on, because that was really weird. You see this anime and you're expecting, all right, light novel. I guessed video game, but... Yeah, video game or light novel. Nope, based on stage plays. And considering it's like alternate history with Mecca, not what you were thinking (laughs) would be on the stage. But it comes from the mind of Soji Kawamori. Okay, let me, let's try to distill the plot here. So there's two stars, the East and the West. And it's basically like, you know, if you were to divide the Earth into East and West, that's pretty much what these stars are. And there's Joan of Arc on the West star, and then there's Nobunaga on the East star. And they're both kind of having dreams about the other. And like, there's some destiny related in there. Apparently, the west side is unified under King Arthur, and the east side (laughs) is not unified. It's like in a warring states period. Like, you know, so kind of that classic Japanese period of history, but now we've got Mecca thrown in there. And Joan of Arc meets Leonardo da Vinci. That was really weird, guys. Like, it was not the guy I thought he was going to say he was. And eventually they sort of descend to the West Star and they meet Nobunaga at the end and, you know, destinies intertwine. That's what I got from the first yeah, episode. That, I mean, and, that there's, is, and there's mechas. That is about as concise a summary of the series as you can get. That was well done, King. Okay, so that's the best I can do right now. The way that it's presented, I, it felt very middle of the road, kind of mediocre. I, I thought that the... Uh, the dialogue was really lame, and the se- the setup is something we've kind of seen before, but I didn't feel like it was executed with that much finesse because the episode kind of is kind of choppy, and especially Joan of Arc's journey to get to Nobunaga, I, it felt rushed because they they wanted to get her there like by the end of the first episode, but that creates this such a weird journey for her because. It almost makes her seem kind of stupid or like and she's really ex- naive or weird. Like, And she's so passive. She's one of the few well-known historical characters. I mean, there's lots of women throughout history that could be used. As sh- but she's one of the best well-known characters. To have her be like a warrior and like forefront and making her own decisions. And she just seems like, all right, Joan, come here, come here. All right, go over there, go over there. All right. Yeah, so we don't get a lot of personality from her in the episode. And also just the journey is so choppy and the alliances flip-flop instantly and then she's, bam, she's there. And it- I, I think the best part is, out of nowhere, Leonardo da Vinci basically kidnaps her after showing her a, a nifty tarot card reading, goes up to his spaceship. It's Magellan. And then he's like, hey, Magellan, my bro. Hey, Leonardo, bro. Because we are united under King Arthur. By the way, uh, Joan, I'm going to go and steal a mech and they're going to go and chase after us. And try to kill us. It, this happens in the span of like three minutes. It was, it was just, again, it just felt like they were trying to get somewhere in the first episode, but it felt rushed. And so then it also sort of suffered from, okay, let's cram as many characters as possible into this episode so that we know that it's this big, long, epic story or whatnot. But I felt like it needed a little more focus on the main cast to give me a sense of who they are. I mean, I guess I get who Nobunaga is. I mean, he, I, you know, he... he I was about to say, he's a weird character because depending on the series... The, he can vary from like the evilest bad guy who ever did evil in Japanese history to like pragmatic warrior guy. And, you well, know. I didn't mean I know who he is yeah. from history. I meant like in the show because I don't think that they make him too complicated. I yeah. mean, he is called the fool, and I it, I think it mo- it doesn't come from him being an idiot. I think it comes from him being very like straightforward and simple. And so I thought we got that. Yeah, oh yeah. That wasn't you know difficult to discern, but I, I everybody just, else was like, yeah, whoever you are. We are definitely people who are based on historical characters. 
So it's not a, it wasn't terrible by any means, but at the same time, if you're already watching a bunch of stuff, it's like one of those shows where I feel as though if I wasn't watching a bunch of stuff, I might watch this, but because I have other things to watch. Yay. Yeah, I'm just because it's Kawamori, I'm probably just going to background watch what people say on Twitter. But yeah, I don't think I'll watch anyone myself. I'll be like, if somebody else is like, nah, man, that episode really shotguns a lot of stuff at you. And isn't that good? But like two, three episodes in, they kind of catch their pace and it's good. Uh, maybe I'll pick it up later on then. I can imagine it getting better. It's just not a really strong first episode. And if it gets better, I can imagine that it does. But I'll be on the lookout to see, like you said, Al, how other people are reacting to it. But it's not a really good strong showing. Yeah, and especially with all the series that are coming out and all the series we're continuing from last season, they usually give you advance warning if a show is going to go off streaming. There's no reason to like rush out and watch this when there's so many other interesting things to keep your eye on. All right, see you guys next time.